for such a great introduction. And I'm really flattered to be here and honored to be here. In fact, when I saw, uh, right now I can't see the screen, but earlier I saw so many attendees and I feel it's really impressive that you have been doing such a great job. No wonder you got the best chapter award, well deserved. So um, once again, thank you for coming to my lecture and let's just get started. So, <clears throat> By the way, you are the first um, place that requested the transparent antennas. So I have been presenting in the past uh, few months, I mean, at least, yes, uh, in the past few months, but mostly on the CubeSat and link budget. And you are the first one who request, requested for this subject. That's so I'm really interested. So transparent antennas, there's, from the name, it's clear the antenna is transparent to light, right? So. So it gives us an idea of it's being a clear antenna or yeah, so invisible antenna, however you want to put it. Because of these properties, there are many uh, potential applications such as integration with windows, with uh, solar panels, with um, like a wind shields or even contact lens. So if you just, you know, take a, just want to do a, some search on the papers on transparent antennas, there, there will be many papers, especially in recent years. So I will not go into any of those because I believe a great active young mind like yours could do many things that none of us is capable of at this moment. So, so I would say, the initiative is on yours. I will mainly focus on the basics and how to, you know, read the literature. So, all right. So what are they we talked about? So they are, they can be called a clear antenna. So they are clear for light or optical signals. But then if, but then when we talk about antennas, at this moment, most of us are talking about antennas that is for like RF antennas, right? The microwave antennas. We're not doing optical antennas. So therefore, these transparent antennas, the transparent material has to be reflective for microwave signal, has to be conductive for microwave signal. That's why we can use them as a, um, you know, a radiating, make them into a radiating object. So in that sense, uh, we could think of a transparent antenna as more like a frequency selective devices, or even easier, like more like the screen on microwave oven that allows you to see through, but make sure we don't get radiation from microwave oven. So something like that. So so first we just ask ourselves what what they are, and then see how we can make one. All right, so. Since I talked about what they are, so achieving transparency. Of course, obviously, we can make transparent antennas from transparent conductors. Or think of that frequency selective surface, right? Well, we can maybe just do it from meshes. So I will be talking about these two categories of antennas today. So let's start with the transparent conductors, because I think most this is what most people are interested in because they are newer and they're interesting and you will be dealing with different material. So there are quite a few materials that have been reported to be used as transparent conductors. They are uh, carbon nanotube based, such as graphene or carbon nanotube, I mean, a nanocarbon based, and a transparent conductive oxide, uh, one of uh, one of its uh, typical uh, example is indium tin oxide. Okay, yes, indium ITO, conductive polymer, nanowires, which is a really popular one right now, or nano or and and nanowire hybrid, and that's something I want to touch base on because I can't talk extremely too much about it just because um, you know I'm working with a company they just started on that so. It's a little bit on the uh, on their own material list, so but I will talk about the potentials. Okay, so the basics on optical transparencies. When I put up these two pictures and the equations, even though I know all of you are great with math, great with equations, this still makes you feel like okay, let me spend some time. Right. So what I want to point out is, uh, first of all, the optical transparency. So first of all, there is a frequency, 
again, it's a frequency selective kind of frequency selective surface or frequency selective material. We need to decide on what frequency we're talking about. It will be transparent in optical frequency, so a frequency higher than something called the plasma frequency, or just say, let's say threshold frequency. Anything below, uh, then, that will, then that will be our frequency, and we want the material to be not transparent, to be conductor in that. All right, so that gives brings us to a property called electron density. So again, we can just, you know, get, the, get an idea of, some of the terms and let's move on, okay? So that electron density I just talked about, that's something related with, that's something that will determine the optical transparency. So long story short, the optical transparency of a conductive material, a transparent conductor, is related to its thickness. This T is the thickness. Uh, for some reason, my laser pointer is not on. Let me try to... Um, give me one second. Let me get my laser pointer on. I had it on before. All right, here, right here. So the optical transparency is a function of thickness. So the thinner the material, it's more transparent. Okay, that makes sense. That's what we know, right? And another property is related to material processing. That's the electron density, etc. So those are really determined by how you design the material. So that's kind of out of our hand. For that, we need to work with as a material scientist. But what we know is we just have to make the film thin and the thinner. So with that, let's take a look at some examples. I pulled it out from my most recent student's um, master's thesis, and I listed his thesis. It should be online um, maybe in, in a month. I mean, he just submitted it, but it will be free online for everyone to check out. So... So for this table, the important thing are these numbers here. You see, these films are in like a nanometer region. So they are thin. And in fact, these are relatively thicker films. For some reason, some of the, uh, some of the um, material reported, uh, they seem a bit different. But anyhow, what we really want to point out here is these are thin. So to get a conductivity, I mean, to get, not conductive, to get optical transparencies, really what we do is we're just using a very thin conductor, a, a material that is really thin. Okay, so if it's thin, what is associated with thinness? All right, um, I just realized something is not showing on my screen that I will point, I will have to tell you from this moment on, on my own. I don't know why it's not showing. So anyway, uh, before we move on to the next subject, let's just take a very quick at some basics. So if we have a sheet like this with, with W uh, thickness uh, T and the length L, a sheet like this, the, the resistance, the long from this, the resistance along the length is, Rho times length over the thickness times the width, right? So the length over the cross-section area. The more cross-section area you have, less resistance you have. A longer the wire, longer the sheet, more resistance we have. So we are familiar with that. Now, let's just rearrange it for a little bit. Have the resistivity over the thickness. So this resistivity over the thickness times length over the width, that's still the resistance. Now, we define this resistivity over the thickness as surface resistance or sheet resistance. So whenever you deal with uh, thin films, you will be dealing with sheet resistance. And as you can see, the unit of this sheet resistance is the same as resistance. Resist, uh, resistance, it's ohm. So therefore, to differentiate that, the sheet resistance we normally uh, note it as ohm square. So I have a square here, okay? Just a square symbol, basically. It's really just a square symbol. So when you see ohm square, that's a surface resistance. And I would like to point out, some people make mistake by saying surface resistance is ohm per square. No, it's ohm square. It's ohm, but it's it has the same unit as resistance as ohm, but we note it with just a square, okay? so. Let's think of that. All right. Okay, so 
now the natural question. So if we make the sheet very thin, now what will happen? We all know for a conductor to be, I mean, I mean, we all know for a conductor to be in, to be a conductor, it has to be several, uh, you know, uh, several thickness more than the skin depths, right? So let's talk about the skin depths real quick. The microwave skin depths, that's where the current focus on or electromagnetic field focus on um, or mostly focus on is this uh, lowercase uh, delta. Normally, we take three delta at least. Uh, it's Yes. So we take three of those and say, okay, until the, uh, after that, electromagnetic waves, waves uh, att gets attenuated. So we can derive that on our own. So, all right. So, so this, so, so, okay, the skin depth. So here I'm just writing the skin depth in terms of the, um, in terms of the surface resistance. Okay. So just from here to here, there is not much change here. Now, now high frequency resistance. So when we design the antenna, so we know on a rod, the electromagnetic field or the current focus on this focuses on mainly the skin depth area in, inside of that. So the high frequency resistance, we calculate it with this area, this blue area. Okay, so we high frequency resistance is the length, I mean, is the resistivity times length over the area. So that will be this, uh, is that delta or gamma? I think it's delta. Yeah, delta times 2 pi b. Okay, so that's normally the high frequency resistance, and that's assuming that the current distribution is uniform. If we are talking about sinusoidal distribution, normally we will have one half, so from the antennas class. Okay, so this tells us if we have a really high, high frequency resistance, then the antennas we make will be very inefficient. Or in another words, back to the thin film, again, there is a square. I don't know why my square symbol is not showing, but there is a square right here. So I really wish to just draw it in so you could see. Oh, actually, I we have a, yes, it's actually shown here. So it looks like this, ohm square, okay? So it's just ohm square, not per square. All right, now we can come back here. Okay, so let's back to the thin film again. We define the surface resistance. Now we just talked about the microwave skin depths. So, in order to achieve so the full the between the normal resistance and the uh, surface resistance, I didn't get there. Is there a question? I couldn't quite hear. What would be the minor difference between the resistance of the surface and the surface resistance, like normal resistance and the surface resistance in context of this diagram? I really cannot hear you. I mean, I hear that someone is talking, but I really can't hear very well. Yeah, I guess yeah, he's asking about uh, what's the difference between the normal resistance that we have or the square yes. resistance. What would be like uh, the difference? This surface resistance. Right. So the normal res so this is the normal resistance, right? So resistance resistivity times length over the cross section area. So we define resistivity over the thickness as surface resistance. Does it answer your question? So normal, so then, so the surface resistance is basic, so it's it's resistivity of the material over the thickness. So, so, um, so for example, okay, so, so for example, over here, got it, got it. this material, so for example, this material here, the surface resistance is 8.5 uh, ohm square. So we know the thickness. Therefore, we can compute its resistivity. And from its resistivity, if you know the th now we know the thickness, as long as you know the width and the length, then you can compute the resistance. Okay? Shall we move on? Yes, yes, sure. Okay. All right. So... We have to make the thin, make the film really thin to achieve optical transparency. Now we just talked about the microwave skin depths. For a metal to be a metal, it has to be a few microwave skin depths thick. Okay, it has to be thick. So it tells us now how good of a metal a thin film can be if we make it so thin. So the answer is it will not be too great, right? Okay. So right here. Okay. So. 
we need the thickness to be thicker than this for it to be a good metal. But you see, normally in order to achieve optical transparency, the films are quite thin. It's, a, it's in nanometer regime, and you can calculate the skin depths. They're actually thinner than the skin depths, right? So therefore, all these transparent conductors will make really bad antennas. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And in fact, that's what most people try to work on within this limit, within the fact that we will have bad antennas. How can we get something a little bit better than bad? When I said bad, it, it means the efficiency will be somewhere like 10% or 20%. So, for example, for example, if the efficiency is 10%, then um, it's okay. So you can calculate it. You take that, you make the 10% into dB, right? So it's minus 10 dB. And if we are making an, an a antenna, if you are making a dipole antenna, then the best, then the directivity, the best directivity is possibly, I mean, the directivity of half wavelength dipole is about 2 dB. So the gain is 2 dB minus the 10, minus 8 dB. So do you really call that antenna? Some people still do. That's fine in terms of sensing that you can. But anyhow, that's what we have to be working with. Just keep in mind. All right. So what did we learn so far? How is transparency achieved? By making conductor really thin. Antenna efficiency depends on the thickness. So we have some dilemma here. And here, I just want to show the material that we are working with right now in our lab, that we work with these materials. Uh, they have like, okay, so you want the sheet resistance to be as low as possible, so therefore it's a good conductor, but, but we have our thickness. And if you want to make these guys higher, the thickness of the conductors are somewhere below 20 nanometers. Okay, so. All right, I would like to talk about the how to design some of these using all these limitations. But before that, let's examine some existing popular transparent conductors. So this first one I want to talk about is um, transparent oxide. So I'm not talking about graphene and the carbon nanotube-based antennas because if you recall my one of my earlier pages, you see those carbon nanotube-based antennas. Without any treatment, they look almost black, right? So they are either not as transparent or not a very good conductors. And of course, there are many other, there might be some newer paper that you could look up and the graphene is generally a bit lossy, even though it can be highly transparent. So in the antenna oxide, it's the one of it's one of the transparent oxide that has been mostly studied. It has great trade-off between conductivity and transparencies, and a well-known method to process or fabricate them. So cons: often, if you want to have more than um, often, if you want to have at least a fifty percent of efficiency of the antenna, then the transparency is lower than seventy percent. So the antenna will look kind of like yellowish, okay? But again, if that if you are okay with that, it's okay. And and this ox this material is based on tin supply, and the tin supply on Earth is limited, so therefore it can be expensive and can become more and more expensive. All right, so so. Um, they have to be deposited with like in clean, mostly in clean room settings, such as sputtering, et cetera. So it's not as easy, so it's, it, you can't uh, produce it as easy as just inkjet printing. And with that said, also this material can be a, on a brittle side, so you can't really print it on very flexible surface. Overall, great material. Most transparent antennas that you have seen in the past like 10 years like 10 years ago from now mostly they are all reported as indium tin oxide but these are the limitations that we need to keep in mind and especially if you want to go for something flexible this can be challenging so next let's move to nanowire we can almost think of nanowire as today's indium tin oxide they are getting really popular. Good conductivity. It can be inkjet printed, it can be spray printed or rotor roll printed, flexible. It's really, really popular. So if they are so popular, why don't we just use them? 
Now, here are some things that I want to point out. We've been examining uh, silver nan I mean, nanowires. Nanowires can have copper nanowire or silver nanowire. And as you can see, imagine silver nanowire is a bit more conductive, right? So here, so we had this material. We had this thin film made from silver nanowire about a year ago. Um, I mean, a year, I mean, actually this one, we got this one in 2020, okay? So these are the specs that we got. It has a good conductivity, 13 ohm square. Now you can see my square, somehow it showed up as a shadow here, okay? I, it was uh, black on my screen before. Okay, the transparency is really high transparency. We love that. Well, the trade-off, it has to be very thin, so that means we will be expecting lower antenna gain. But anyhow, even before that. So when we tested in when we tested this sheet in 2020, the blue line here, so we made it into an antenna and we try to uh, look at it as one one. So it, you see we still get the antenna response, right? It looks like something we can make it into a resonant type of antenna. After a year, this red is what we got it become really lossy. So I thought we did something wrong and I conducted the uh, vendor, the material scientist who made it for us. I said, hey, I think you gave us a wrong sample. Turned out silver nanowire can have relatively short shelf life. After a year, it starts degrading, okay? And then the next thing, let's look at its power handling capability. So we did just a very basic test. You guys can do it on your own. So we just use a, um, a DC power supply and we measure current. We put, just clap the two ends of a silver I mean, nanowire screen. And you see it start to burn down. So it's, yes, when we put this much voltage and this much current, it start to burn down. Okay, it start to burn down. And this is a different one. It's a, uh, it starts, okay, it starts burn down at five, and this is a hybrid silver nanowire. Okay, so just the, so what it is, is the silver nanowire film being treated with some different methods. Some people treat it with polymer, some people mix a different material. So I don't exactly know what material is mixed in here because that's from our collaborator. So just the pure silver nanowire itself, it has relatively lower power handling capability, DC power handling capability. Now we say, okay, well, we're antenna engineers. We work with RF. So let's say, okay, it has bad DC power handling capability at the higher power, it burns, it melts. How about RF? This is what we did for RF. So it's a fun experiment. So we um, made a monopole antenna with a silver nanowire. Okay, we left, we put it here, and then we start, we amplify, our, this is a big power amplifier, so we amplify our input signal, this power amplifier, and then the receiver here, this one is the antenna of the same shape, but made of copper tape. Okay, so we started to put more and more RF power here, and this is what we got, a hybrid film will have, so, okay, this is what we got here, and I give you the geometry of the monopole. So the silver nanowire film melts at about 8 watt of input power, which is still not bad, right? 8 watt is not bad. But a treated film, a hybrid film, can handle 16 watts, so it's higher. So you might say, well, even 8 watt is not bad. It's true, it's not bad. But notice that we tested in s -band. As we raise the frequency higher and higher, then the size of the film is going to be smaller and smaller, and accordingly, it handles less and less power. So, uh, just if we keep on calculating with you know this manner, we saw that it will not handle more than one or two watts if we make this film to be a radiator at 5G or 6G frequencies, and that's where people want to use transparent antenna, most transparent antennas for. So silver nanowire is gonna have the uh, challenge of shorter uh, shelf life, lower DC uh, handling capability, and low RF handling capability. That's gonna be really a challenge for us. Okay, so now let's look into the 
uh, nanowire hybrid. So if you treat the silver nanowire with some people, again, some people treat with polymer. Some, I mean, I am not really an expert in material processing, so I only knew the film that has been mixed with different materials. So they can have a longer, short, longer shelf life, better power hand, uh, handling. And the key is we have to collaborate with material scientists. Okay, now we talked about challenges. We talked about different types of transparent uh, conductors. Now let's come to the antenna geometry. So I'm hoping that after this point, you guys will take it on your own. So, because I imagine you read a lot more papers than me every day and you have a lot more fresh mind. So that's our hope. Okay, so, so for such a thin film with not so much grade of a conductive, well, I mean, not when it's not such a great uh, conductor. So microwave signal can possibly leak through so for a film like that, we see that it's gonna be challenging to make a patch antenna because you have a bad conduct conductor as patch and a bad conductor as ground plane, that will make it really horrible. So therefore I decided that we, in our group, we will not even explore this patch geometry. We will directly go to the dipole geometry. So dipole geometry might be possible. So to do that, let's again revisit this resist, this, um, resistance or high frequency, just normal resistance, okay? So the resistance, let's just think of it as, yeah, loss resistance, okay? So is resistivity over thickness, okay? So that's our sheet resistance. Normally when we get the material, the sheet resistance is decided and it's times length over width. So it tells us, well, if we want to increase the efficiency of an antenna, we need to decrease the loss. To decrease the loss, it's quite obvious, maybe we can just make our dipole fatter. So that's why you saw some of my previous pictures here. See, I said dipole antenna, it looks more like a flat, you know, fat dipole, that's the reason. So, so we just fatten it, okay? So we decided let's just fatten it and then see what can happen. So, um, so what did we do? Okay, so, so we really mainly fattened just by um, just make it make the width, see if we can how much uh, how how wide we can make the antenna. We did not really go uh, use any um, algorithm such as genetic algorithm or any other algorithm. We we just try to make it wide such that the overall current will still go from the will be still flowing on this direction instead of. Uh, on the longitude direction. So so what I meant here, there are room to study the optimization. You might be able to study the current distribution and then design what kind of geometry you want. Right now, we are just doing the fat dipole and we started to do some experiment to see if we can verify what we thought. And there are some challenges because these thin films, making connection is kind of hard. So we built some test fixtures to do that. And as you can see, these test, test fixtures will be uh, not quite sufficient for higher frequencies such as um, 15 gigahertz. Even 10 gigahertz, this can be challenging, but we were pushing to 10. So maybe if you are gonna work on this type of antennas, you may first have to build your tools, build your fixtures or design the fixtures first. And that's general research idea anyway. In order to do something really cool, we spent a long time to build our bases, right? So, okay. So here are some results. So my student holding uh, his fat dipole antennas, right? And this is our gain improvement. So after we, so first, so this first one is uh, length to width ratio is about 2.5 and now we fatten it to reach 1.25. So he put the name optimum. It's like this optimum we did, again, as I said, we did not get it from any optimization. This is more like we make sure the, the current real, so this is the limit where the antenna is, the current of the antenna still go from bottom to up instead of distributing on the horizontal side, okay? Otherwise the resonance and everything changes. So we do have <clears throat> some gain improvement. Of course, we wish to see like a 
one or two dB improvement that will not happen, but you might be able to gain some improvements. And now the next I'm saying, well, let's stack them up. So you might say, why do you want to stack them up? Well, first of all, one bad conductor or bad reflector. If I put one more, two people have more power, right? So it's a better reflector. So it's better. So it can be made into a better um, um, better antenna. So now you might say, well, in that we'll case, why don't point, you right? just make the film thicker? What's that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, while we're doing stacking, please repeat that uh, initial point where you have started now. Right. Okay, maybe someone can repeat the question for me. I'm so sorry, I really can't hear uh, you. Yes, so uh, Pankaj, what we could do actually, uh, we'll be addressing the question uh, the late, uh, means after the talk. I think so, that would be uh, great. Okay, yeah, uh, okay. yes, please remember your questions, or, yes, yes. and then sure. after the talk, I'd be happy to answer all of them, okay? All right, so, so. So we are understand that what we're trying to do here is to make the effective thickness of the transparent conductor thicker so that we can have a better conductivity. But then the natural question to ask is, instead of stacking them, why don't you just make the film thicker? See, that's the challenge. No, regardless, it's a silver nano wire, if it's carbon nanotube or graphene or anything, when you deposit them thicker, they become opaque. Okay, so for silver nanowire, the film that we have been showing you is like a 10 nanometer film, 20 nanometer film. But if you make it to 40 nanometer film, it becomes just something like a silver, like aluminum. It just becomes opaque, like something silver or shiny. It's not transparent anymore. So if you want to keep it transparent, they have to be thin. But then we're like, okay, so we need it to be transparent, still kind of like you have an optical invisibility, then how do we get better reflect, uh, reflection for microwaves? So we stack them up. And of course, you cannot stack them up too much because too much, then it will you will lose your transparencies, right? But otherwise, here, we stack two of them up, then we can get some gain improvement as well. Okay. So after here, I'm going to move on to the next type of antenna. So we, we examined transparent conductor, the really cool one, the one that we can hide from our vision. But we see that so far, because of the material processing, we see the antennas most likely will not is exceed more than 40% efficiency for somewhere 70 to 80% of a transparency, optical transparency. Unless we do something together with material scientists and, of course, do many creative design. Otherwise, I just cover the physics of why it's happening. Now, let's look at the different conductors. So at the beginning, I said, well, uh, we can make it from transparent conductor or those meshed metal. So I want to move on to meshed metal. Why? Because our university is known for Small, known for the student build small satellite. This is our most recent CubeSat. It has been launched already, flown. I think it's even deorbited. It was launched in January. They have a website that you can look up. It's quite cool. So for things like that, we don't care if we can see the antenna. What we want is the antenna will let the light go through. So when we put it on the solar panel, the solar panel or solar cell will still function. So light will go through and we can make it into an antenna. So therefore, we want to examine meshed antenna geometry. It's still optical, tra optically transparent because the light goes through from the holes. So the transparency is, uh, is naturally defined at the whole area divided by the entire area. And there are some studies. So these are some more classic studies where <clears throat> the whiz of the lines were kept the same, and it was seen that as you make the antenna more transparent, your gain reduces. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, nothing, I mean, nothing is free in this world, right? So if you make it more transparent, your antenna gets um, less effective. But then what we did in our group was, well, we said, well, let's examine the thickness. Okay, so what if for the same transparencies, we make the uh, what if, yeah, for the same transparencies, we make the line thinner? Or 
word just for the same the same number of lines. If we make the line thinner, then we approve we, we can improve the transparency, right? So for that, we noticed as we make the line thinner and thinner, we can improve the gain. So that that's mainly because you make the line thinner for the same transparencies. You put more lines, more lines, so that more current can go. So so with that, we are able to develop relatively transparent and yet good antennas. So we were able to achieve transparencies as high as 90 or 95 percent and the antenna gain give, like, was, was having about like a four to five dB antenna gain and that is relatively acceptable for a satellite for CubeSat uh, applications, whereas the transparent conductor will give you a lot less than that. So, so, and after that, of course, uh, the power people for satellite, they will be always concerned how much power, how much sunlight power you are blocking with your transparencies. So for that, to address that question, we did many tests in the past, and then we were able to show that the biggest block for the light comes from the cover glass of the solar cell. The solar cell, in order to protect the cell, there's a cover glass. The cover glass gives you the biggest block. And then it's the antenna. So we are able to show that the actual blockage from our transparent antenna is less than 3%. So that is acceptable because even without putting anything, there are shadows from instruments, from the wire antennas on the solar panel. So we, can, we could say, okay, so see, our antenna is comparable with the shadows that you are getting. And with our antennas, you no longer need other types of antennas. So it's already integrated and conformal. And of course, we also have to study uh, when you put an antenna on solar cell, how much of antenna gain loss you will be expecting due to the solar cells. So <clears throat> here are some results here. And one of, so as you can see, I put the skin depth again, okay? The reason I put the skin depth uh, um, equation here is the solar, cell, the solar cell layer. That's a semiconductor layer. So, so if this, if this con semiconductor is really thick, then it, will, it can act as relatively a decent conductor. If it's, ex if, um, yeah, okay. Or if it's thick and still ha it has like a relatively lower conductivity, then fine, we can treat it as, uh, if, if it's thin, so sorry, if it's thin, and has a lower conductivity, we will just treat it as something close to a dielectric. But the worst thing is, it has a conductivity around this region, and it's really thin, so it's very lossy. So the solar cell will give us, will make our antenna very, very inefficient. But the good thing is, for a solar cell, we have all these grids, right? So these grids actually act, act as the buffer zone. So without the grid and with grid, so that's the so that's the gain difference that we are seeing. So some experiment to back up what we have learned. Um, so normally, due to the lossy solar cell layer, we will be expecting maybe somewhere to two to three dB gain reduction. Also depends on the frequency, but that's better. So even with like just for example, you think of two dB gain reduction, that will lower our efficiency uh, to somewhere about fifty percent, right? So that's still better than uh, most optically transparent conductors. So that with that, a lot of system engineers for uh, satellite making they will accept. I mean, most likely they will accept the results. So with the meshed conductor, we have some byproduct. So by after studying meshed conductors, we were able to uh, see that we can assemble these meshes up to improve the bandwidth of an antenna or make very easily to make circularly polarized antenna. And this is also a circularly polarized antenna or use the mesh geometry to make an antenna to be a uh, harmonic filter. Once you make a harmonic filter, what you do is you integrate it 
This is also a harmonic filter integrated with power amplifier that helps to improve the power added efficiency of a power amplifier. So it opens many possibilities. Another project I want to point out here is called Isaac Integrated Solar Panel Antenna Array for CubeSat. So, so far I've been talking about a transparent antenna, just one element transparent antenna. So here, this is an array antenna. So with the similar design ideas, like an idea that where the transparency is achieved by the light going through, and the microwave reflectivity, microwave conductivity is achieved by making sure these holes are smaller than the wavelength of a microwave signal. With that, we were able to design a reflector array that goes on top of a solar panel. And this is inkjet printed by an inkjet printer. Okay, so, so we, we inkjet print conductive ink and then bake that to cure it. So some, some of the inks you don't need the curing, but the one we used, uh, we need to bake it and then we come up with the reflector array. So a quick background on a reflector array. Most likely you have already studied it, but if you haven't studied it yet, reflector array is, you see, if you have a parabolic reflector, if you have a ray coming in here, if you want to go to a desired direction, you bend the surface manually, let the surface to reflect it, right? So the reflector array achieve that phase difference with the size of each element. So therefore, we design the element. We design the, <clears throat> this is the size of the element, what phase response it can achieve, right? So we design the, we design the size of each element to achieve, to let it bend the light to the direction that we want to, we want to go. Okay. And here, <clears throat> this is the phase response as per different um, um, substrate permittivity, lower permittivity, higher permittivity. So for lower permittivity, as you can imagine, the substrate will be thicker. Higher permittivity, the substrate will be thinner. We want the substrate to be thin. But higher permittivity, you see the shape of the phase response is so steep that means if I want to, that means if I want to achieve that 270 degree phase, so that's the size of my element. And next, my, you draw it down, that's the size of my element. So the element sizes will get really close. So that casts some challenge in terms of fabrication. So we have to pick what substrate we choose, we could choose, depending on what's our fabrication tolerance. Right. If you can fabricate something really steep, I mean, if you can make, if you can fabricate something with really high precision, you can differentiate element from element, then go for a substrate with higher permittivity that will make our substrate thinner. And our substrate, as you can imagine, is the glass. The thinner the glass, the more transparencies. Okay. So a similar idea here let's move on so we examined these two geometry both of them will let the light go through really well but ended up we decided to choose uh, our final peak our final pick when we examine all the uh, properties like this you know like uh, the phase response that we can achieve we decided loop geometry is a bit big a bit better and we also decided to go on the um go with go with the sub wavelength geometry so that will allow us to reduce the thickness of the glass so final performance here the antennas were printed and assembled on the reflector array um, as is so you see the simulation result 24 db reference antenna so not not transparent reference antenna it is 24 db and the transparent um this actually is yeah transparent i think right so uh, let me see. Yes, a reference antenna is, okay, a fabricated on FR4. Glass reflector array is the one that we inkjet printed on glass. And the final, the inkjet printed glass on solar panel gave us 21 dB gain. And that's fairly decent. So that's 3 dB lower than the simulation. And simulation is without considering any lossy solar cells. So that brings us to the summary I don't, I mean, instead of reading through all of that, I'll just quickly give some pointers. So to achieve optical transparencies, we either do it by using optically transparent conductors or by meshing the conductor. 
Okay, the meshing looks kind of like a frequency selective circuit. I kept on saying that because I know most of you are interested in metal material, frequency selective surface. I thought maybe that's something, you know, you could examine a little bit more. Now to make, to, to use transparent conductor or any transparent conductor are basically just very, very thin conductor. Because they are so thin, they are limited by the microwave skin depth. If, because if the, material is thinner than the microwave skin depth, then the material is going to be very mossy, and therefore the antenna is going to be not efficient, right? So another route to go is to mesh the conductor. So when you mesh it, we have, a, so we have seen that we can achieve good trade-off between transparencies and antenna, antenna efficiency by using meshed conductor. Of course, the meshed conductor is not invisible to us. So if you want to hide the antenna, transparent conductor. If you want a, a good antenna that you don't care if someone can see it, because, such as application on solar panel, then meshed conductors. And there are still room for optimizations. That's because I kept on, you know, not because, I mean, I also talked to you about how the um, antenna geometry can be optimized by studying the current distribution better, by using some opt optimization software, or by using techniques that is available in metal material antennas or frequency selective uh, surface. So there are many rooms to explore. All right, just a little bit about myself, where I work at. I work at Utah State University, and this is our campus, so we live in a you know, kind of like a, a valley. It's a beautiful valley. And we have a research um, a lab, a research facility called Space Dynamics Lab. So we are associated with, I mean, the Space Dynamics Lab is spin-off from our university, but they are growing really big now, Space Dynamics Lab. And, and I noticed that if I talk about just Utah State University or Space Dynamics Lab, it may not make too many, too much sense. But one thing to show is, in year 2020, there was a comet called a New Wise, or just Wise, I think. Yeah, New Wise. I don't know if you were able to see it. You could just see it with naked with our eyes. So that comet was discovered by a, by the New Wise telescope that was made at Space Dynamics Lab. So that's kind of our link and the heritage, and that also explains why I work with satellite antenna design so much. And we also, every year, we host a conference called Small Satellite Conference. Uh, that was just over a week ago here. And it's it's a very big conference. It's international conference, more than several thousands of people. Maybe you will come someday. And I talked about space dynamics labs and the stars, but my main point is to all the young students and researchers here, you are our real stars. And we all look forward to be able to working with you. And a quick summary on transparent antenna. So they're clear, okay? And it can be clear to our eyes, or just maybe not clear to vision, but clear in other sense. So with that said, I hope you approach all your research projects and studies with clear mind, even sometimes your vision may not be clear. As long as you keep your mind clear, then you know how to solve problems. So that ends my presentations and I am open for questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much once again. So the floor is open for question. Any uh, questions? Yes, hello, ma'am. Hello? hello? Yes, 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 I can. Hello? Yes, yes, I can, I can hear. You're audible. You're audible. You can uh, ask. Yeah, yeah uh, ma'am. Actually, uh, I want to know one thing. I mean, how to, uh, once you have designed a transparent antenna, let us say using the uh, ITO glass, uh, coated glass, or even your HDHD or gold. Let me just change how, my. Can I yes. Could, yes. Uh, uh, how to connect or how to do the soldiering with the this one? Yes. With so that connector. is really. Yes, so that is really challenging. So the connector oftentimes, so oftentimes you might have to build a fixture first. So oftentimes you might have to, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. I just shared yes, my yes, screen. Yes, yes, So um, I'm not saying you. this is the only way to go, but oftentimes you might have to make something like, um, 
uh, like this. Can you see here? Hmm. Or let me see if I can show you uh, another picture of our fixed. So this is not the only way, but there might be a chance you we will have to first build a fixture like this that can hold your antenna. Okay, so to, in, in the study phase, this might be one thing to do, or you will have to use the epoxy that you don't need a solder ring. Because otherwise, yes, the connection, making connection is always really challenging. And there, and also, okay. and of course, and so, so these are the initial study phase where we study how this material behave, right? After that, if you, are clear about how this material behave in different frequency, etc. Then you could consider some proximity feeding. So your feed okay, line, yeah. might be, yes, your feed line will be normal oh. copper feed line, but the antenna and that can be hidden in some structure, and the antenna is placed at the vicinity to use the coupling to to, to do the feeding. But that will further reduce the uh, efficiency of the antenna. Because no connection, not many connections. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. In this picture, yes, ma'am. In this picture, the ma'am has just shown. What is the material of the substrate here we have used? So substrate, he is asking about the, uh, the chapter so like, on which the on which we mounted that antenna, na, vertically. Yes, uh, yes. That what we can say a transfer point. Yes, yes, would, yes. Exactly. What would be the substrate? Yes, yes, ma'am. What the substrate this, is just uh, a normal FR4 substrate. It's just normal okay. Rogers material. You can do any substrate. It's just a normal normal uh, FR4 okay. substrate. Okay. We are not even using the substrate. We, the substrate is really just a, giving us a support. We, you see here mm. there's a connector. The connector is connected with this clamp so that we build a clamping. Mm. So we basically build a clamping mechanism so we can slide our material in. And, and you don't have to do this. Yeah, you can do many other things, but this is something we came up with because we need the connection. As you can see here, previously, before we had a connection, we even just cut a small piece of copper tape to give a connection, mm -hmm. right? So, so yes. So, for any transparent conductor material, making connection is hard because, because as I have shown, uh, let's see, where did I show that? We are, uh, uh, ma'am, in this, in this picture, uh, yes, what you right. so is it one second. We, we, call, so we can call it stacking or not? Okay, I cannot understand uh, In the previous picture, the antenna which was shown, is it a part of the stacking or not? Yeah, so he was asking like, uh, yeah, here, is it like a result of the stacking of the... Uh, uh, okay, are we using stacking word or not? It's not stacked, but you can do the stacking on the same uh, same fixture. Like, like how we can uh, increase the number by using stacking here? What, what does it mean by stacking here practically? Or didn't get stacking is you take two transparent film, you put them together. Okay. In, a, in, a, in this vertical fashion? Yes. So st stack, like not, not, st not like line them up by like one, one conductor, you put another next to each other and then put them vertically. Excuse okay. me, so, have you used materials like uh, Perspex in this, which is available in plenty and easily <coughs> assemblable? <coughs> you can machine in, machine them, etc. Uh, I don't think I understood. Would you please repeat the question? Can we use materials like Perspex? What does that mean? It is a, it's a material which is uh, looks uh, transparent in total. But okay. it's uh, in a non non metallic uh, one. Oh oh okay yes. It, looks so for, it, it is used in many of the windows and other places where you don't want to have a glass. Yes yes so so um, do you know the conductivity? Of, so is that a dielectric? Be, be very cheap also because it is available in plenty. So yes. is that dielectric? For a commercial use, I think that may be a very useful material. Yes, is that dielectric or is that a conductor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, this thing. It's a di it's a dielectric, but uh, <clears throat> it it has got different variations, so you can select the way you want and do it. Because yes, I didn't sure. See that material sure. being used, but it is yes. a very useful material for commercial purposes because it will be very cheap. Yes. So, so 
So, for example, these transparent conductors, the, the, these are silver nano wire. They are printed. They are they are printed on just transparencies, mm. right? So you could print that. You could quote that on anything yes, 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 you want. Can, so yes. so what you suggested is great, but you will have to. So you yes, could you could inkjet print a very thin layer of the silver nano wire on that material. But at yes. higher frequencies, the losses may be more. That we also have yes. to be studied because okay. I didn't of see course. that popular material. So I thought I'll just check with I you. I see. Thanks. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, Raymond, Thank you. That's a great uh, suggestion. Transparent material, is it like Indi uh, Indian tin oxide or something else? So this one is... So so this particular one, we examined ah. all of them. This particular one we have here is silver nano wire. Indian tin oxide is good. Indian tin oxide is good. If you, okay. if you would like to use that, it's a great one to use. The only not I mean the only reason people are trying to explore silver nano wire or or treated or hybrid silver nano wire is that one tin I mean of course silver is limited too, right? One tin is limited. Two, indium tin oxide um, is hard to be printed on flexible surface like contact lens, anything flexible, it has its challenges and also it's it's relatively more expensive to make your antenna because most technology is developed for for like a, more like a clean room settings whereas we would like to explore most people would like to explore options that you can inkjet print in normal labs so it's just a cheaper so the cheaper you the yeah. che yes yeah like we are using on the uh, solar cells no so we are putting in the same way or like we are using some sort of like optical, what you can say, transducer between the, the solar cell and the RF, this, this uh, antenna. Um, in the, okay, in the I heard, of the solar cell. I know you are asking solar cells. Um, can, okay, yeah, we are, can we are actually repeat? deploying this on the solar cell in one of these slides. So, Palab, do you think you could repeat his question for me? Uh, so, yeah. So, he was asking about like uh, where like uh, like with the help of solar cells. So, he was just uh, placing the antennas on the top of the solar cells. So, what he's asking like whether with respect to solar cells they are uh, optically transparent. That's what I'm asking like how you You could also type the question like uh, if like that's what I'm interpreting actually. Okay. okay. So, let me try to, okay, let me try to answer. So, for solar cell. The only reason we can put an antenna on top of solar cell, the only reason we could do that is there is a cover glass. Okay, uh -huh. if it's just solar, there are some newer solar cells such as like the thin film solar cells. There, they may not have cover glass. They might just have a coating. So for those, we, I mean, I hardly doubt we can really do antennas on top of it. You might have to do it around or under. So for the space certified solar cells, up up until this point, it's the, uh, most solar cells that for space use are triple junction uh, glass. I mean, the triple junctions, uh, more like a glass based solar cells. Okay, so they so in order to protect your cells, there's a, a layer of glass. So we use that glass as a substrate. We put antenna on top of that glass. Yes, I think so that answered uh, his question. Yes. Okay. Uh, so any more questions? Uh, there is actually a good comment from Dr. Mahadevan. He was uh, with ISRO. He is also an ex-alumni of IIT Kharagpur actually here. Oh, he has so a nice very good, uh, yeah. So he's from ISRO, he's Indian space uh, agency actually so oh, great <laughs> hi yes now i can see you yeah so uh, he has a very good comment actually like, uh, okay. like even we didn't knew about this small satellite conference that that's held every yes time. yes so it's it's uh, like hopefully from next year we can like send students yes also. so um so where where is the comment i couldn't see the comment uh yes it is in the chat window uh 8 54 time Yes, it's uh, like in the people there is 30 and nearby. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Time is 8.54. Yes, yes, yes. 8.54. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight yeah, very, yeah. 9.24 a.m. it's showing there in this US oh, time. 9.24, okay, this one. Yes. Informing lecture, this, okay. Well, thank you, yes. And the small satellite conference, I'm glad you paid that, I mean, you mentioned that. 
Um, it's a really good place to go. Well, they don't pay me to say this, okay? <laughs> but no, no, with but it's very coming up, the modular systems have come up very well. And yes, it's yes. really very good for students to participate and learn from different uh, yes. uh, experts who are there in the field. So a conference yes, of this type, annual conference is extremely useful. Yes, and the best part is for people like, I mean, for students like ours, oftentimes they spend most of their time in the lab, right? Yeah. The, the small satellite conference, that's, that's a place that when you go, you see all the vendors like a SpaceX, Blue Origin, and yes, many yes. other companies. So some companies will be building the satellite bus, some give, make solar panels, well, some make yeah. battery, and then yeah. some of them are just rocket companies. So you ask yourself, what do they do? They are the ones that takes your satellite to space. And then the nano racks, they make the um, deployer that takes your sat that deploys it from ISS. So, so it can be a bit overwhelming at the beginning because that's something that we are not used to because you know most of us will be used to simulations, uh, experiments, more in a lab scale. So seeing all those rocket and uh, deployers and the mechanical things can be a bit overwhelming, but that's a really good learning experience. See, there may be some students who would like to make only some payloads. So they yes. can get a, a satellite bus from one such manufacturer who will give it yes. a very uh, yes. cheap cost. Then they themselves yes. can make on their own. The interaction yes. is very nice in a conference of that class. I Absolutely. Intimate IIT Karakpur or our IEEE. So that yes. and if you are students interested, are interested please... may can join. Absolutely. If you're interested, please let me know. I will put you in contact with the organizer. I mean, uh, the secretary who does the newsletter. Yeah. And if you if you are interested, normally the abstract deadline is sometime in February. That's the abstract deadline, Objective. and then um, and then the paper deadline is sometime in June. And then if you are interested in coming with or without paper, anyway, you need to book your hotels. Uh, I mean, at the time that you submit your abstract, you have to book hotel because this is a small town. So, and the, and the, this year we have more than 3,000 people. So it's really f hard to get hotels and Airbnb. So, yeah, yeah. but anyway, let me know because this is a conference that is close to my heart. It's right here in town. And I yeah, really yeah. think it's a great but learning also experience for students. It is coming up in a very big way. And so many students are interested in this these days. Yes. So that is what I uh, showed that the interest so that uh, our Indian students can participate and yes. shows like IIT Karakpur and others, uh, NIT yes. and others can join. Absolutely. And I don't know how many students are still uh, right now in this room. I want to say that the satellite our students built and launched already, that satellite is purely made by undergraduate students. Yes, yes. that's what is happening. By no. undergraduate students. And lots of high school students are building their satellites. So, of course, you can do it. Yeah, many students are built and sent also in India. Yes, 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 so many years. Yes. So, this is very nice. So, this is good information for us. Thank yes. you. I think the IIT Karakpo secretary can take the details and then disseminate the details to other students. Yeah, so sure. Well, that's perfect. Thank That's you, wonderful. You. Thank you for this comment, actually. Uh, one more thing which I would like to know about the University of Bhutan, we always remember for Dr. O.P. Gandhi, who was a, a medical electronic specialist. Yes, yes. He came long time back to his road, gave a lecture on that. He was a medical medical electronic expert, O.P. Gandhi. Um, not Om Gandhi, right? Yeah, his name is O.P. Gandhi. Okay, is he is he at U University of Utah? Was he yes. at University? Of yes, yes, yes. I know him. I know him very well. He's uh, yes. we, 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 the University of Utah. We always attach uh, his uh, this thing here. His work yes, on yes. the medical electronics. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know him. He's a he. He's great. He hosted me a couple of times yeah. when I gave a lecture there. Yes, he is wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for Thank the you. nice. Thank you, nice thank, you. Uh, say, thank you, thank you uh, once again, actually. I think so, like, uh, we could end on a greater sense. Like, yeah, it was really nice, actually. So there were a lot of questions.
question answers and mostly specifically being in a virtual mode and having such great interaction it's really great actually it's really great thank you no thank you. doubt so no doubt actually that you have really won the awards no doubt like you really deserve it actually so, <laughs> oh, thank you that's very <laughs> that's very so awards this was really so really great like see when we have a lecture like if you don't ask question means you don't understand anything yes, yes. but here like everyone asks questions so i believe like everyone i'm understood. so glad i'm so glad yes. so we had a participation of nearly 40 participants oh that's almost yes almost that's 40. impressive yes. and it's night time for you right yes yeah. yes yes so almost yes because it's during night time that's very <laughs> impressive and also thank you for such a great opportunity for me to open my day with a great conversation with you now i will have a very happy whole day now <laughs> thank you thank you for the compliment once again and thank you all the participants and i would personally like to thank all the people like who are at the background of this chapter including our vice chair ananya day Uh, secretary mr satya prakash who is uh, uh, there along with all the other members like who are actively involved because without them it would be really difficult for us to have a vibrant team and i think so that's the thing like all together in collaboratively we have been working together and that's why i guess we are getting such a word and dr mahadevan we'd also love to have you in back in iit kharagpur once again i guess thank you <laughs> yes so run my of our uh, yes and i would love to have you at utah state too at the small south <laughs> conference yes. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you once again. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank Have you. a Bye. great evening. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.